This is a presentation of One Login Training. Welcome to Getting Started with Identity Lifecycle Management. This is the first of three videos in this series. The purpose of this course is to take an in-depth look at One Login's Identity and Lifecycle Management add-on. This add-on can be purchased separately as long as you've also purchased the Advanced Directory add-on or it is part of the professional bundle. Let's take a look at what we'll be covering. In our first video, we're going to start off with a basic overview of these features that make up identity lifecycle management, automated provisioning and deprovisioning, admin approval workflows, custom user attributes, entitlement mappings, and application specific rules. In the second video, we're gonna demonstrate how this is all configured. And in the final video, I want to make sure you get a look at some best practices and troubleshooting tips. So first, let's take a look at what Identity Lifecycle Management actually does for you. Once you have one login implemented, your users might start their day by logging into the one login portal. And from there, click on titles to access the applications they need to get their work done. As they click on each tile, the application will open in a new tab and they'll be automatically logged in without having to provide any further authentication, unless you want them to. Again, it's important to understand that once you configure your applications to integrate with OneLogin, many of these applications will force users to log into OneLogin first before they can get to the application. With Identity Lifecycle Management configured, you can fully automate your user onboarding process by creating user accounts for them within those applications. And you can even automate the offboarding process by ensuring that users no longer have access to the applications when they leave. You can purchase Identity Lifecycle Management as an add-on if you've already purchased the base SSO package and advanced directory or you can simply purchase the professional bundle. And this includes SSO, advanced directory, identity lifecycle management, plus HR driven identity and MFA, all for the same price. The features that are enabled when you have purchased identity lifecycle management include automatic user provisioning and deprovisioning, as well as the ability to create custom user attributes, assign user permissions or entitlements within the applications, modify other user attributes within the applications through rules, and control when a user is created, updated, or deleted within an application through an admin approval process. Most of the configuration related to identity lifecycle management comes after you have established a process for creating your users in one login and ensured that they're logging into one login securely as possible. Configuring features like automatic provisioning and deprovisioning is done when you're configuring their connections to the apps they need to do their jobs. Though, if you need custom user attributes, you will most likely want to plan how those attributes will get populated from other directories during that first stage of implementation, creating the users within one login. So, what exactly is automatic user provisioning and deprovisioning? Provisioning and deprovisioning work like this. When a user is created in one login, mappings fire off that look at the user's attributes and automatically assign that user to, say, a role that then in turn assigns them to Salesforce, for example. Then, provisioning kicks in and a user account is created for them automatically within Salesforce. So from day one, this user can get access to the applications they need to do their job. Then when the user say leaves the organization and is removed or suspended within one login, they can automatically be removed or suspended within Salesforce as well. User provisioning is all about getting the user records you need into the applications themselves. When it is enabled for an app connector and configured, it fires off automatically whenever a user is assigned to that app connector, or when a new user is created or 
updated, deleted, any sort of change user call will trigger a provisioning or deprovisioning event. So if a user is first being created, provisioning will check to see if that user already exists in the application. If the user doesn't exist, then it'll create the user. All subsequent changes or updates to the user fields will then be sent over and updates will be made within the applications as well. And finally, if a user is deleted from one login or deprovisioned, you can configure it so that the user is deleted from within the application. Or you can just set it so perhaps the user is simply disabled within the application. It is important to understand that users need to have accounts within applications before they can log into those applications. So when you are configuring provisioning, you need to configure provisioning before you configure the app for single sign-on. You can have the provisioning and deprovisioning process happen automatically, or you can require that a create, update, or delete command needs admin approval before it is sent to the application. This is the admin approval workflow we mentioned earlier. The admin approval workflow is enabled on a per app connector basis. You can require approval whenever again, a user is created, updated, or deleted. All three options are actually enabled by default. This means that all provisioning and deprovisioning events will require admin approval by default. Why am I yelling about this? Well, it's important to remember because sometimes folks don't realize this is the default configuration and don't understand why their users aren't just automatically being created within the applications. You can view all provisioning deprovisioning events that are awaiting admin approval from the main provisioning page. From the provisioning page, all you have to do is select one of the listed events and click on approve if you want it to go through or skip if you don't. You can also see what provisioning or deprovisioning events are pending approval from the app connector itself on the users tab. Click on where it says pending and you will see a similar pop-up where you can click approve or skip as desired. Another helpful feature you get with the identity lifecycle management is the ability to create custom user attributes. You can define them by going to the user's menu and selecting custom user fields. From the custom user fields page, you can of course see any custom fields that have already been created. And to define a new custom user field, just click on the aptly named new user field button and fill in a name and short name. Since the short name is used for API purposes, it should have no spaces in it. Once you've added in new fields, you'll see them on your user records below the standard fields that are part of all one login accounts. You can manually fill in the values as necessary or better yet, you can have the fields filled in automatically when you're syncing with an external directory that has those values in it. Here, we can see where we can map fields from an external directory like Active Directory to user fields within one login. If you want to map a custom field, you just need to click an, on the Add Attribute button up there and match the field from Active Directory to the custom field you defined within one login like you can see, see here that we've done with country code. These custom fields can then be mapped to parameters that are passed to applications during user provisioning. For example, here we can see that country code field being mapped to the country field over in Office 365. The fields can also be using, useful elsewhere, like in mappings. Here we can see the conditions of a mapping are based off of a user having a country code equal to US and their department field 
equal to sales. If a user matches this criteria, they will be automatically assigned to the NA sales role, which in turn will most likely assign that user to apps that are associated with that role, like maybe Salesforce. <laughs> the custom user fields can make your automation, such as mappings, even more robust. Now, entitlement mappings are not the same as the mappings we just looked at. Entitlement mappings are about assigning users basically permissions within an application. Entitlements are defined within the application. Basically, their general way of referring to fields or groups, roles, things like that within an application that control what a user is authorized to do when they log into that application. Thus, entitlements will be different for each application. For example, G Suite or Google Workspace has Google Groups and say Office 365 has Office 365 groups and even license codes that need to be assigned to users. And Salesforce has actually quite a few entitlement fields such as permission set, profile, and role. You'll see the entitlements listed on the parameters tab of an app connector, along with other parameters that can be sent over to the application during provisioning. Assigning users to an entitlement is a matter of assigning them to an object that has been created on the application end, like an existing role. Thus, part of the configuration steps require you to pull the available values like the available roles in Salesforce or say the available Office 365 groups in Office 365 into one login. So you can click on an entitlement field like we see here over on the Salesforce and choose from one of the existing, in this case, roles available. And of course, we've got quite a few that are predefined over in Salesforce. Again, if we did not initially pull those entitlements in from Salesforce, there'd be nothing listed in the dropdown. Last but not least, we have application specific rules. Rules are very similar to mappings that we mentioned earlier. They're basic if then statements, just like the mappings are but they're created at the application level instead of at that full one login account level. So again, rules look at user attributes and if a user matches the conditions that are defined within the rule, then actions will be applied to that user. Actions in the case of rules are about assigning values to parameters that are being sent to the application. For example, I might create a rule that says if the user's department field equals sales, then assign them to an Office 365 sales group. When you're matching parameters on the parameter tab of an application, you're setting default values for all users that will be provisioned into that application. But when you use rules, you're using them because you want different sets of users to be assigned different values within the application. For example, here, we're looking at a user's title and the roles they were assigned to within one login. If their title contains sales development rep and they are part of the one login NA sales role, then we want to assign them to the sales profile within Salesforce and the Eastern sales team within Salesforce. This concludes part one of getting started with identity lifecycle management. Please continue on to part two. This is a presentation of One Login Training.